Okay, Atwood machine problem. Uh, so quick note, I did a whole bunch of Atwood machine problems uh, earlier. I'll try to link some of those to, uh, here, but I'm going to redo it, and we're going to do this with the Lagrangian. Okay, so a quick note about Lagrangian. I'm not going to go over everything because I already made a video on that. The Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus potential energy, and the path in world space that is the solution to this problem would be one over which has the least action. So the action is the integral from t1 to t2, I should have written that down, of uh, the Lagrangian dt. Uh, but the answer is that if you have, if you're trying to minimize a function like that, that that gives you the smallest integral, then you can use the Euler-Lagrange equation, which says that the partial of that function with respect to one of the variables, this is any coordinate, I'm calling it q, uh, minus the derivative with respect to time of the partial of Lagrangian with respect to the derivative of the, the time derivative of the coordinate has to be equal to zero. So if I get an expression for the Lagrangian and then set it up to this, I can solve for the equation of motion. And that's what we're going to do. So here's my problem. And, and I really like this because it shows something very powerful about uh, Lagrangian mechanics, even though we could do this in another way. We could use Newtonian mechanics for this too. The thing is that I don't really have to have real variables. Okay, I can, have, I can just call them, call them whatever I want. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to do. I, and the, the thing is, how many variables do I need to fully describe this system? If I, how many variables do I need so that I could give it to you and you know exactly what position this thing's in? And the answer is one, right? Because if, if you know like the angle of this, how this rotated, or the position of one of these, you could find the other one. But that's fine. I'm going to actually use two coordinate systems to describe this. Okay, so let's call this... Um, I'm going to call this distance y1, and this is m1, and that's m2, and this y2. Okay. So if I want to write down the kinetic energy, uh, it's going to be equal to. Well, let me let me go ahead and write the equation of constraint because there is an equation that I, that y1 and y2 can't be whatever they want. If you think of this distance all the way, it has to be constant, right? Because as this one moves up, that one moves down, but the total distance has to be the same. So what if I said y1 plus y2 equals some constant c1? So this distance is c1. And that's true, okay? So now I can write the, uh, the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is gonna be t equals 1 half m1 y1 dot squared plus 1 half m2 y2 dot squared but I only want one variable so over here let's solve this for y2 dot y2 equals c1 minus y1 so y2 dot if I take the derivative it's going to be the derivative of c1 which is a constant so zero and the derivative of y1 which is going to be minus y1 dot so if I find y2 squared y2 dot squared is just y1 dot squared so I can replace y2 dot squared with y1 dot squared, which you may have already known, but it's nice to do it formally. So now I can say t equals 1 half m1 y1 dot squared plus 1 half m2 y1 dot squared. So that's going to be 1 half m1 plus m2 y1 dot squared. Right, because I can factor out the y1 dot squared. Now what about the potential energy? So u equals the potential energy of this, which is just m1 g y1 plus the potential energy of this one, m2 g y2. But again, I can put in this for y2. So I have u equals m1 g y1 plus negative m2 g y1, right, because there's a negative, and then I have that c term too. So it's going to be plus mg to c1. Now my whole Lagrangian is going to be L is this t, 1 half m1 plus m2 y1 dot squared minus this is going to be minus, and I, I can factor out, uh, um, it's going to be, let me factor it out first, y1 g times m1 minus m2 plus m2 g c1. So I'm going to subtract that so I get, uh, let's just say plus 
y1 g and I'll bring the minus sign in there and I get m2 minus m1 plus m2 g c. That's my Lagrangian. I should have left a space. Okay, now let's. Uh, we want to take the partial of that. With, see, we only have one variable now. I've reduced it to a one variable problem, even though I start with two. So that's good. So let's take this L, okay, and I want to take the partial of L with respect to Y1, right? Because in my Lagrangian, I need to find this term. So the partial of L with respect to Y1, this doesn't have a Y1 term in it. It has Y1 dot. This one does. So I get g m2 minus m1, and then that term zero. That's it. Now I'm going to take the partial of L with respect to y1 dot. So this term has it, right? So I get a power of two, so the two comes down. I get two over two is one. I get m1 plus m2 y1 dot. And there's no other y dots. Now I can take the derivative of this with respect to time, d dt, of the partial of L with respect to y1 dot is going to be equal to, well that's just a constant, and then the derivative of y1 dot with respect to t is y1 double dot. So I get m1 plus m2 y1 double dot. So now I have this minus this equals zero, so it's going to be g times m2 minus m1 minus this m1 plus m2 y1 double dot equals zero. So if I saw, I'm going to add this to both sides and I get g m2 minus m1 equals m1 plus m2 y1 double dot. I can divide both sides by m1 plus m2 and I get y1 double dot equals g m2 minus m1 over m1 plus m2. That's it. Okay, let's check that solution. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Does it have the right units? Uh, this has units of meters per second squared, and then I have kilograms divided by kilograms. Check. Okay, what if I take this, and M2 is very, very, very large compared to M1. In that case, M1 shouldn't really do anything, and the acceleration should be G. So if M2 is large, then this is just going to be M2 and this is just going to be m2 and they cancel and I get g, so that's good. What if m2 equals m1, the acceleration should be 0, and so I get 0 over there, that's good. Okay, so it does work, and it is constant acceleration. Uh, we can do this problem a lot of different ways, but but there you go. So I mean, you could then integrate this twice to get the uh, position, but I, I I think here this is a good place to stop because that really solves the problem, this acceleration of, a, of an Atwood uh, machine. And there you go. We're going to do some more problems.